Okay, let's um, let's pray and then we'll start. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you for this time, Father God. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you that you are here with us, Lord. We thank you for, Lord, that it's your desire that each one of us be equipped for the work of ministry. Yes, Lord, as we see, Lord, in Ephesians 4 and verse 11, God, that you have, inst Lord, instituted the fivefold ministry in the church. And, and Lord, we thank you for the equipping and for the training that each one of us, Lord, called to various forms of ministry, God. And I just pray that each one of us, even as we yield ourselves to your equipping, your training, and uh, the empowering of the Holy Spirit, that we'll be, Lord, so, um, Lord, uh, complete in thorough, O oh God, in our equipping. And as your word says that um, your word is inspired, Lord, God breathed as it uh, is described, Lord, and and sufficient, O oh God, for every man, for every woman of God to be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Father, we thank you and we value your word. We value your presence today. We thank you. Speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, we've been looking at a sermon, um, preparing a message, right? So we looked at uh, the conclusion, <clears throat> how to conclude a message. And um, conclusion, does it come in the beginning or in the end? Right at the end, right? Uh, so that's where we conclude. I uh, also want to, um, you know, which is not there in the notes, but really want to talk to us about, um, you know, a time of ministry that um, we can conclude our uh, our message with, right? So we we finish the sermon and um, we we invite the presence and the power of God to reinforce whatever we had stated, whatever we had shared, and also. We open up uh, the hearts of people for the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives, right? So, so it's a powerful time. So, rather than just completing the message and then saying, "Okay, you know, I'm, it's fine. See you all," but we can give an opportunity based on, of course, based on the message, we can give an opportunity for the people to respond to the message, right? So, which we traditionally you know, refer to as the altar call, um, but it can also be a time of ministry. You know, when we say altar call, we're saying primarily it's like a like a salvation. You know, message and a respond to and a response to that. You know, how many of you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? You know, it's a salvation invitation to receive salvation. So, uh, so that invitation can be for recommitment. That invitation can be for experiencing the power of God for you know, healing and deliverance and so on. That invitation can be um, for people to move in the gifts of the Spirit and so on, right? So so that can be, so you can even pray through that and plan for that. God, you know, what do you want to do? What do you want me to do as I end this message? You know, how do you want to minister to the people, right? So how do you want me to facilitate that? What should I do? So think of that, right? Um, because uh, like we were saying last class, we... Uh, give a lot of focus on the start. Like, how do I make an impactful start? You know, what should I you know, introduce the message as, and and how do I, you know, share through all this? But then, we sometimes give little or no importance to the conclusion. You know, how do I end the message? And uh, you know, what what really God wants done? You know, when we pray, when we uh, you know spend time in His presence, the Lord might reveal certain things, right? Reveal certain needs in the congregation. Reveals or uh, gives some certain words of knowledge. Word of, words of knowledge need not be right there. You know, it can be much before. Prophetic words can be received much before, even as we spend time in the presence of God, praying for you know people's needs and so on. So God might reveal uh, certain things that um, that might strengthen the lives of the believers because we know that you know when it comes to prophecy, it brings edification, exhortation, comfort. So. Um, all that can happen, right? So what we are really doing is in response to the message, maybe it was a message on faith, maybe it required people to do something, right, uh, in order to uh, or step out in faith and, and receive something in their lives. So we can give an opportunity for that and say, God, you know, 
why don't you just come fill this person fill these people with your power with your presence and may they experience your power your presence in their body in their mind and so on right so um so don't um forget that as part of the conclusion right uh, as a uh, include that ministry time plan for that pray through that well sometimes god will surprise you know god wants god might want to take it in a different direction altogether you might want to just maybe you know pray and ask for something certain things but god might want to do in a certain direction but that's fine right but uh, be aware of it be prepared for that right and give time for that okay okay so um, the last thing what we want to look at in line with sermon Uh, preparation or uh, sermon construction is the lang use of the language okay uh, so language when we say uh, we we can talk about you know different languages distinct languages like whatever english or hindi or tamil or kannada whatever but also within that language right if it is hindi if it is kannada is it clear is it simple is it something that is understandable for all people okay so how do we ensure that okay for the message to be clear for the message to be simple for the message to be understood by everyone right so we need to we need to think ahead we need to prepare ahead and right? be clear in what we are sharing that is one thing okay when there are difficult or uh, complex uh, say you know complex things that we are sharing okay complex points that we are sharing you know complex thoughts that we are communicating ensure that it is done in a simple way right now what is simple to you need not necessarily be simple to others we need to understand that right so is it simple to others you know the words that i'm using you know will will others understand it at all will they find it difficult you know certain you listen to certain sermons like you know especially like um, messages by azadaim ministry and so on you know it's like full of terminology right um which we need to understand beforehand in order to really under, understand the message right or enjoy the message even right we need to understand these words which means um so you you think about it you know the words that you're using will it be understood by people or are they going to struggle right so let it be clear let it be simple there's always great um great power in simplicity right uh, the the simpler it is the way you can communicate it well we need to understand that not all things can be made very very simple it's it is a challenge right there are certain statements there are certain words maybe which you can explain and use that word right so so that's the thing okay so the language must must clearly communicate the message okay so the language that you use the way in which you use it is it communicating the message think about it and maybe sometimes people will give feedback and say you know we didn't understand or we can even ask as you're sharing you look at people you now we are going to look at uh, the practical aspect of it a little later so when you look at people when you look at when you consider the body language when you consider the expressions on their faces you realize that some of it is not really being understood right so you need to take some more time in order to explain it right so the purpose of us sharing the sermon is not to make us sound good is not to make us sound well educated no, it's not that it is so that the the truth of what we are communicating is understood by people so when people understand it only then the benefit is there yeah so when i when i understand a message if i understand it then i'll use it if i understand it then i'll try to apply it if i don't understand it i won't in fact in mark chapter 4 we see that when people did not understand satan came and took the seed you know that's the first thing that happens right it falls fell falls on the ground they did not understand so satan comes and takes away right they quickly forget it right so so it must be make an attempt to understand right uh, do not use scholastic language meaning very scholarly language you know very difficult words just to impress the people right we don't have to do that 
and choose words that people in your congregation will understand. You know your congregation, you know the audience, so choose words that they will understand, right? If it is a well-read congregation, maybe we can choose certain words which they will understand without any problem. But if it's a congregation that needs things to be simple, then make it simple. Now, it doesn't mean that you know one is higher or one is lower. It's, you know, it's never that. You know, just because a person, a congregation is well read or well educated, does not mean the people who are simple are, you know, uh, they they need to be looked down upon. You know, they're all equal in the eyes of God, but we make it an attempt. Uh, we make it uh, our responsibility to share it in a way that can be used by people. Okay, so that's the thing. Um, Avoid long sentences with too many words. Make it short and sweet. You know, this is something that, uh, you know, I, when I was in, when I was doing my postgraduate studies, there was this professor of marketing, and he would always use multiple sentences, and it was always to impress people. You know, he will just use, like a, you know, like a major film dialogue. You know, he'll just say this, this, this. He'll keep on going. It'll sound very impressive, but you will lose the audience, right? So. Um, make it simple, avoid long, too many words, or long sentences, right? Uh, the language we use can be a hindrance to pe people. How? You know, if we, if we are speaking in a grammatically wrong manner, then it becomes a hindrance, okay? For example, if people understand, our lang understand the language, and if people know the language well, and if I use language without proper grammar, then it's going to be difficult. Like, for example, okay, let's say, okay, I, I just one day decide, fine, I'm going to practice my Hindi and I try and you know speak in Hindi. I need to make sure that it is grammatically correct, right? Uh, otherwise, I'll when I say it, it'll sound uh, it'll sound disrespectful, right? So instead of up, I I say tu, and uh, you know, then then people are like. You know why? Why is he sounding disrespectful, right? So it should be grammatically correct. People should not be. It should not be an effort for people, right? If because if you continue to make grammatic errors, grammar errors, then they are constantly thinking, oh, that's wrong. They are thinking, okay, that should change, right? And that happens, you know, especially when somebody is translating, for example. Uh, the message is translated in two languages, and if you understand both the language, then it becomes a lot of effort. Right, and you become tired, first of all, and then if that person translating is not translating properly, right, then you're not able to receive it at all. You become very troubled, right? Why is that person, you know, over and over again, that person is not, you know, translating it well? So the same effect will happen if we are not using proper grammar, right? So learn the language, uh, use correct grammar, right? Use words that will exactly express the meaning. Okay, this is also just you know sometimes we assume that we know the meaning of the words okay um it's good to check recheck you know i do that because the thing is um i might have read words and uh, well you know well just going through scripture maybe um and then you know reading through newspapers i i might have come across these words then i i think that this is the meaning of the word okay I've not really understood the full meaning of the word. I think maybe this is the meaning, and I continue to use it sometimes, and that can be very dangerous, right? It can be embarrassing, right? So use words knowing what they actually mean. What is the meaning that they convey? And use the exact words, right? And words should also be, this is in line with the language again, words should also be pronounced correctly. Okay, pronounced meaning it should be said, it should be, pronounced in the right way, right? And um, so this is something that we can, today, you know, we can learn it really well because, you know, we use Google. Google always, there's always a pronunciation, right? And there are different kinds of pronunciation, Indian pronunciation, you know, American pronunciation, English pronunciation, you know, when it comes to the English language. So every word, we can actually learn how it can be pronounced. So we don't have any excuse, excuse, right? So learn how the word is pronounced. If it's a Hebrew word, we still we still have the tools. We can use, you know, the Google. We can use um, YouTube. We can actually learn how it is pronounced. Now that will also help us. 
right where it cannot be a it won't be a hindrance for people right okay um yeah so those are some things for us to understand um yeah lastly if you see that language is the incarnation of thought in the sense it is thought which is clothed with words so when we are saying language you know how clear are our thoughts how clear are our thoughts on that particular subject how clear are our thoughts in what we want to convey now if the if our thoughts are clear if the points are clear then language and the words will follow it will it will be clear but if our thoughts are not clear then no matter how much we try to explain the idea will not be clearly conveyed okay so um the best thing is you know again i come back to that same thing of you know trying to teach children i right? trying to teach um you know younger kids certain complex things that's a, always a you know good um what i would say good training if you want to clarify or if you want to sharpen our thoughts on that particular thing you know because with kids you have to be very clear you, you don't have much time you have you know very short attention span right so you have to speak clearly if you are talking about the lord second coming you have to speak clearly right you can't be speaking in in a muddled way so language is the incarnation of thought so thoughts which are clothed with words so if our thoughts are clear on any topic that we want to convey then our words also will be clear right okay any any thoughts any so addition yeah small sure. observation like you know when i was in marketing in yeah. the corporate life you know one thing that we actually learned um, was like you know whenever you're trying to communicate anything yeah. when you're trying to speak if a 6 year old or a 7 year old person can understand you've done your bit. yeah so that was something that is like next stay mm. and uh, just wanted to ask you on a personal note pastor when you're invited to preach at a particular place or a congregation or thing is it a good practice to ask the person who's called you what is the time frame in which i have to uh, you know uh, yes, preach yes. and thing yeah always and also about the audience also you can ask you know uh, what kind of audience and also the time frame because uh, the duration is very important so you can plan the the message how much you want to say how much you want to share and um, yeah you know because on a particular topic you can share quite a bit or you can share uh, concisely so time frame is always um, so you can plan it and the uh, scenario when they said it's okay you can go ahead and teach what is the usual ideal time to you know uh, yeah see there there is always a start time end time in their mind also so maybe if they are being little flexible about 15 minutes 20 minutes even beyond that we can take that liberty but it's good to um stick to yeah stick to that that time whatever time they have. because they do have a start time and time in mind you know nothing is like so unless it's like something like a i'm sorry something it's like a retreat or you know so where it's it's more relaxed and you can be conversational you can be inter- even you can interact and so on so there you can take time you know like let's say if it's if it's an hour they say you know you can even take time one and a half hours and then the 30 minutes you can make it interactive asking questions and you know and, and also take it slow uh pace it well so all that is possible but um, yeah it's always good to find that out because our uh, when it comes to language our rate of speech also matters um how much we speak within a particular minute or in 5 minutes how much we are conveying um you know within that so uh, if it's uh, so we can actually space it out you know yeah so we can we can either make it fast make it slow uh, compared to yeah compared to based on the audience and also the time yeah we have yeah yeah okay um i think if we if, uh, probably we can do that we, uh, we can watch a video on ted talks the tech talks are you know very very well organized talks on different topics right there are uh, mostly there are five minutes like technology entertainment and something right it stands for ted um uh, yeah ted ted yeah ted x and ted talks so it's on these topics of course 
it's on various topics not everything could be scriptural etc but it's a good um, you know there are some yeah design is a technology uh, entertainment and design yeah so um, the speakers are actually trained you know they they are or they are given guidance on how to speak and uh, how to start how to finish and if you notice they are very very precise in their speaking they, they because they might have 10 minutes and they are very precise in what they share and it's very impressive um, because it doesn't tire out the audience right so it's good uh, if we can um, if you can look at some of those videos we can learn quite a bit uh, i think i also have some information just uh, one minute um oh yeah i do have some information i'll share that um i have a you know a pdf talk like ted the nine public speaking secrets of the world's top mind so i'll share that when we come to that topic right we can look at that also okay okay so let's move on to chapter 10 which is uh, ministry when it comes to ministering god's word what are the different forms of delivery you know how are, what are the different ways by which we can deliver god's word the same message we can use it differently right the same thought uh, how do i do it how do i you know so the most common one is we speak it right we say it we look at the audience uh, this is the topic and we we begin to say it okay so that is one way of doing it the second way is to dramatize it and to use it as an illustrated sermon okay so illustrated sermon meaning there could be um, you know i remember listening to uh, it in a you know that story form is also a close example of that this whole story of ruth right ruth story uh, it was told in a very contemporary way modern way modern names and it was the whole story was uh, told like in a in a story form right in a contemporary story form so he just said you know one day there was a man named richard and how he married and how he went and and something happened and and i remember being you know listening to that half an hour um like completely focused right completely focused concentrating on it right so it is a, it's a very very um, nice way of doing it very interesting way of doing it right so you can dramatize it right um it can be a very illustrated sermon in the sense it can you can use um people to come act out certain things you can do it as a drama certain conversations or certain parts of that you know convers uh, sermon can be actually act acted out right uh and you can do that i remember you know i think watching um um this was a message by i think td jakes right and it was a message on spiritual warfare where they actually had a, a a miniature of a tank like a battle tank on stage right and uh, td jakes also came to preach in battle fatigues you know like the camouflage that the army wears so he comes and he preaches that it was a very dramatic dramatic one um and but then it it depends on the audience and it also conveys the message conveys the message right and i also remember one one this is a youth pastor but she's a, she's quite a senior lady she ministers to the youth so she came on to the stage dragging a coffin like a coffin right dragging a coffin and then she wanted to actually share about how she is dead to sin how we are dead to sin and alive to god right so she brought a coffin and she actually you know was, was lying, lying inside of that and saying this is the old me the old person is dead and so on just to drive home the point so you can dramatize it it can be an illustrated sermon it can be like a story form we can use props on stage you know for i think for kids this works really best right when we use props um i'm sure you've seen videos where we're talking about sin talking about cleansing that is in the blood of jesus where they use you know three kinds of chemicals one is red one is you know colorless and and they you know pour the red one into the muddy one and then it becomes colorless as well and so use these props you can use that you can use people as props also right and uh, i remember uh doing that uh, you know for one of the holy spirit classes where 
where the Bible talks about how by the Spirit, Romans 8 says, by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, right? By the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit helps us, but He helps us to take hold of, He takes hold of us to take against, to have, go against the barrier, to go against sin, right? So uh, I think we did it in STBC also. We had three people, one was God, the Holy Spirit, one was the believer, and one person was sin. Right or the mountain, which is not moving, that sin or stronghold that is not moving. So, so this believer is standing there, unable to push that mountain, right? But then comes the Holy Spirit, and what does the Holy Spirit do? He helps the believer. You know, he empowers the believer. So he does not push the mountain away by himself, but he puts his hand on the believer's hand and against that mountain or against that stronghold. So you can use people as props also for certain messages, right? Messages can be sung, certain parts of it. Uh, have you, you know, have you, I don't know if you've heard this art form where the whole story is actually sung. Dialogues are sung. The whole message is sung. Have you, have you watched anything like that? Um, I don't know what is it, what's it called in different languages, but this is a village, rural form, art form where they you know talk about the different epics you know and they do it in song so i remember watching one particular program evening uh, and it was about uh, bible stories but it was actually sung out um in tamil it's called kada kala jabam you know it's like uh, so i don't know what it's called in uh, in have any of you been part of that no uh, you know it, it is sung out it is like a rural it is like a folk song but it, it tells the story, story of some person, uh, sto stories in the Bible. Um, anyway, I'll see if I can get a video, a video of that, right? So um, I don't know what they call it in uh, other languages, but um, but this is what it, you know, you, you can sing it. You know, it, it's a very old rural, uh, you know, folk way of uh, conveying a message, right? Okay, so visuals. We can use visuals. We can use PowerPoints. We can use videos. Can use charts, right? I can use all that in order to share uh, the message. These also enable it. It actually complements and enhances the message that you're sharing. Okay. See, suppose I say black dog, completely black dog. In your mind, can you see the black dog? No. Suppose I say black dog with white spots. Can you see it? You can see it. So we are people who are visual, right? Whatever words, we don't see it as words, we see it as pictures. So whenever we use images, PowerPoints, videos, it helps enhance the message that we are sharing. Right? People are able to see it, visualize it, and understand it better, right? Especially if you want to talk about some statistics, right? Numbers. So talking about, you know, um, Maybe as a prayer point, and we are you know, sharing certain things. It it helps, right? Statistics. Use powerpoints. Use videos. Okay, um, you can enact it. That is something that we saw, and also you know enact meaning you can have a skit on certain sections of the message, right? A certain you can ask people to come and perform a skit, and then we can share. Okay, uh, and it can also be like a talk show. Okay, have have you seen this? You know, I, I remember we did it once. Uh, it's there on YouTube. We did a talk for one, I think it was an Easter Sunday morning uh, program. It was a talk show. Okay, So what is a talk show? A talk show is when some certain famous people are invited, and there are people who are uh, having an interview. right? So you have certain celebrities, maybe, maybe sports people, and you have a talk show where you're you know, talking to them, asking them, uh, interviewing them. Okay? So this particular talk show, in this talk show, there were people who were dressed up like Bible characters, right? For example, so this is Easter, right? Easter Sunday morning. So we had the woman at the well. She was there. Then there was the centurion, right? We had the centurion who was there. And we had Nicodemus, right? So all these people were there, and they were sharing about what Jesus meant to them how they encountered Jesus. So the talk show host will, you know, invite them. And so it was a it was a very interesting, you know, talk show. 
where the message of the resurrection of Christ was powerfully conveyed. Okay, so you can we can even think of such scenarios. Now it it, it takes a lot more effort than a simple sermon. Yes or no? Yeah. So you have to plan. You have to think. Okay, how how do I convey this? But it makes it very interesting, right? It makes it very interesting, and people will not forget. And you can actually combine all this and then present it and tie it up together, and you can share it. Okay. So these are uh, some interesting ways of sharing the same message. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, you know, when we see this uh, Matthew chapter nine. Uh, this is what the Lord did. Okay, he went. He was teaching. He was preaching, and we see that the power of God was present. Right, His It was always combined with supernatural ministry. So that is something that we can, uh, we should remember. Right, Matthew nine thirty five says. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people so today we have the same privilege of inviting the lord to heal inviting the lord to deliver inviting the lord to bring about change in people's bodies and minds and conditions while we preach and teach the message in whatever form we take whatever way we want to do it okay and romans 12 and verse 6 verse 6 to 8 says uh, you know if you prophesy this is what it says if prophecy let us let it let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Verse seven: If it is ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, who leads with diligence, and so on. So, you know, preaching and prophesying and teaching is mentioned there, and so um, we use it in our ministering. Okay, we use it well. So. All these varied gifts are there, but we use it well in order to communicate, in order to proclaim the message. Okay, so there is a difference between preaching and teaching, right? So let's look at that. When it comes to preaching, it's an inspired word. It could be an exhortation. It's a motivation, right? It's uh, usually a person who's preaching is lively, a lot of energy, forceful, right? A uh, lot of application, not much of explanation. Okay, when, when somebody is preaching, they will say, you need to do this. You know, God wants this to be done. Or God is saying this. The Lord is, you know, the Lord is here. The Lord wants you to do this. The Lord wants you to change. Uh, the Lord wants you to walk in faith. The Lord, you know, so there's not, there may not be much of explanation. Okay. Explanation meaning how the nuts and bolts of how it works. Right. For example, if somebody's preaching on the Holy Spirit and uh, the work of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, they are going to just declare, hey, this is available for you. This is how it is. You know, this is available. You need to use it. You need to walk in it. You need to walk in it in faith. God wants you to do it. So that's the that's preaching. It's forceful. It's powerful. And uh, it's lively. And it's more of a call to action. Right? So there is no explanation there need not be explanation of how how can i do it now you know how do i you know prophesy or how do i release these gifts right? there may not, may not be explanation because preaching is always proclamation right whereas when it comes to teaching right teaching could be at a much slower pace where where the questions are asked in the sense the the teacher himself or herself will ask the questions that are forming in the audience mind now ask the question say you might ask how, how do i do this you know how do i you know pray in tongues or how does it work how do i receive the baptism of the spirit you know and then goes on to explain the nuts and bolts of it and there's a lot of digging in deep into scripture there's a lot of you know looking at chapter and verse and so on and there is also um, you know explanation of it right so the pace could be slower there could be a lot of explanation. There's a lot of in-depth study, and a lot of you know bringing of understanding, right? So, we as people who are called to communicate the truth of God's word, we need to be ready for, to do both, right? Preaching as well as teaching, right? Now, there could be there could be times when 
in a message certain parts of it are proclaimed preached right it's a call to action it's an inspiration it's motivating and there are certain sections where we need to actually teach the word of god the how to right what it is and how to of it is explained in detail right it could be now there could be certain things like when it comes to the application part of it there is there is there could be a time where we are teaching this is how it works right and we get into the details of it right okay so we can ask the lord lord you want me to share this message yes but where you know what do you want me to do do you want me to just preach it right be strong and courageous a strong word you want to preach it or oh god do i do i have to teach it how to be strong how to work against fear how to be courageous you know do you want me to teach it lord and then the lord will give the lord will obviously give a revelation right how to do it and uh, and the lord will also empower us to do the same thing right? empower us to preach the one who empowers us to teach also empowers us to preach right but the anointing of god the empowering of god works differently when it comes to preaching it could be to inspire people it could be to motivate people when it comes to teaching it could be to bring illumination but the same anointing of the holy spirit enables us right the same holy spirit anoints us in different manner sorry anoints us in in a different way in order to teach the message right so we we do that the third way you know preaching teaching the third way is to prophesy the word can be prophetically communicated right so it could just a prophetic message it's a now word right it's for maybe for a group of people and it's a now word it's maybe a message of reconciliation it's maybe a warning right it's a now word it's a prophetic word when it comes to prophecy you know you have the prophetic word you can have a prophetic song you can have a prophetic prayer and also prophetic action right so we we've been looking at you know different ways by which the same message can be communicated same message can be delivered so we can choose right we can pray we can choose and we can ask the lord god how how best do i do this how do i do this right any questions here any anything that you want to share and you want to add you want to use uh you know. suppose in the audience is a little bit of distraction in the form of you know either watching the time watching the watch watching the clock or that type mm -hmm. of just just how do you actually you know it just uh, pulls you down but how do you mm -hmm. actually slowly you try to finish it up quickly or you just go as you're led by the holy spirit irrelevant of people yeah reacting? sometimes um, yeah sometimes you need to deal with the distraction sometimes you don't you just go yeah uh, because it's if it's um if the distraction is affecting the entire audience yeah so yeah if it's affecting the entire audience then it's better to deal with the distraction but if not we can just go ahead yeah and share what we need to share and not be kind of not be we being personally distracted by it you know avoid doing that and then keep going yeah so yeah that's the thing um yeah that's about it i think <laughs> yeah but sometimes you know um when when everybody is distracted then it's best to address it so that everybody understands and so it's not like you you kind of ignored it right but then you address it um and sometimes it can be some technical glitch that happens and then you know we are it's it's better to address that whole thing um and then move along um but certain things certain things we can just take it in the flow uh um uh, no for the distraction yes hmm yeah yeah in a, in a way that's uh, in in a way that doesn't doesn't disrupt the message yeah sometimes but sometimes it's something could be serious enough where you need to 
stop you need to stop like for example one particular sunday suddenly i think was, i think it was at the end of the prayer time we were just about to get into the message and was one person collapsed he just standing there young person uh, he just fell on the chair and then there was a commotion there and and so um like people didn't want to move him he had fainted and they were trying to you know so we had to kind of stop everything then make sure he was okay and and then continued and explaining to the people because this the section that was sitting this side could not see what was happening here but they just realized that there was some commotion the sitting the, the section here of course everybody was not able to concentrate because he was this man who was flat so the in such times you know you just need to do that there could be also children crying so we need to you know do that and initially we might hope okay they stop after two or three you know uh, or maybe within a minute they'll stop but then they don't and then it's affecting others so we might have to you know politely ask them you know there are some churches where they're very 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 forceful very you know harsh um, yeah i've seen that also uh, but then you know we can do it politely you can say you know maybe the ch child is not well or uncomfortable would you like to step out and make sure child is fine and then you can come back so things like that um yeah so yeah but certain things you don't have to you can just go on yeah um yeah also another thing that is that we whether it's preaching teaching prophesying you know it's going to take uh, it's going to take physically it's going to take a lot of energy right so um so we need to be one has to be prepared for that uh, physically it's going to take a lot so you be prepared right in terms of uh, speaking in terms of speaking it loud enough for people to hear in terms of making sure that they understand all that you know it's going to take a lot of mental activity and physical activity so one has to be prepared for that as well right okay so uh, next chapter is about ministering god's word and expecting fruit you know expecting results in our ministry now it we will we'll look at it next class but just want to make some some uh, introductory comments on that um you know initially when we share the word we are so focused on just getting it done in the right way right i want to say it whatever i have to say i want to say it without forgetting remembering all that i have to say i want to say without any making i want to do it without making any mistakes right and i want to do it within the time and we are so conscious of ourselves yes or no yeah we're just thinking okay what will the others say what are they thinking all that all those thoughts are there so expecting result from what you're sharing is something that is far away from your mind you don't need to, you're not even thinking about it you're just thinking okay god you do whatever you want right i've been i'm here i'm here to share i've got this 10 minutes 15 minutes whatever let me just lord please help me to do it well i don't want to make a mistake i don't want to be made a laughing stock you know all that we are so conscious of ourselves and uh, but we need to grow out of that right we need to grow out of that and be conscious and focused on what god wants to be done right on what god is saying and what is the end result of what god wants done right so that's about expecting fruit or expecting results right um so we look at it next class we'll stop here okay also want to say that uh, we'll have our assignments uh, first assignments in the coming week i'll post it um and um, so everybody uh, does it online right yeah okay and for e learning you'll have it on your discussion um it will be it will come up on your discussion page so um next week sometime you can expect right okay so we'll stop here uh, thank you and god bless brother any examples of a prophesying the form of delivery um sorry can you just uh, ask me again uh, repeat that please different forms of delivery any example can you give us about prophesying type of ah, the prophetic word okay so prophetic word one thing is that uh it is an inspired word right it's an inspired word it's prophetic so the message it, it does not mean that it has to be 
at the time of delivery right so prophetic word can be at the time of preparation where god puts it in your heart and it is prophetic in nature in the sense it's a now word it is something that takes care of the needs of the people right so in that sense it's a it's a prophetic word it's not like maybe a it's not like maybe a book study or something but it's a very inspired prophetic word you say that okay i need to share this for this congregation on this particular day right so so that is one thing the other thing is also as we are sharing as we are speaking god the spirit of god enables us or he prompts us to share certain things right maybe it's about the needs of people again uh, it could be certain specific details of people uh, where we we speak that out and we minister right maybe certain conditions um, it could be during the ministry time or it could be even during the message where we we call that out and um, because god wants that to be dealt with and so on right um illustrations can be prophetic in nature where you did not plan to say something you do not plan to share that example but the holy spirit drops it in your heart and that's the right one to bring edification exhortation comfort the illustration to bring out that point as well so these are ways in which we you know we minister uh, in prophecy right preaching teaching and in prophecy as well thank you pastor right okay okay god bless thank you everyone see you